everyone, this is Craig Trumpy with ATEC and Asset Scan. Today I'm going to talk about extending reliability with IIoT with a software demonstration of the ATEC Intelligence Platform. After you're logged into your Asset Scan portal, you can come up to Views and look at your Quick Start Guide. You can also find this on our website. And uh, this is uh, eight pages of the most common things people want to do when they first get their asset scan, including getting it set up into test mode so we can get rapid indication, uh, reviewing the trend data in the web, uh, being able to zoom that, uh, being able to change the asset name and associate an image, change alert limits, change measurement interval, change the text and or add text or email addresses for the alerts, and export data to Excel. So let's get started from the top. Uh, when you receive your asset scan, you can open the box. Uh, you can find a test button uh, in the upper right corner. You can press that. That puts it into a 10 minute mode where it will take a reading and update to the cloud instantly so that you know your system is working. From there, you can go to your asset scan. You can pull up your views and go to your all assets. For our demo, we will filter to our Davenport plant location and following a quick start guide you simply click on to expand one of your assets this is a uh, oven fan and to review the data you can click the icons uh, overall vibration peak view you can add other measurements as well for diagnosing and looking at your battery your connection attempts your signal strength and your temperature temperature is of the internal electronics you can also review the timestamp in the date column here. Make sure that you have fresh data coming into your system. To zoom in time, you can go back and look at a number of days. You can turn on and off different trends just by selecting them on or off. And you can clear this graph and or close that graph and go back to your initial image. Moving on to the next phase, which is going to be changing asset name and image. With the right privileges, you can go to Administrative Console and plug on Admin and Assets. You can pull up your vibration transmitter of interest. Press Edit, and you can go ahead and edit the name in any fashion you want. So that's editing the name, but as you uh, saw in there, there's a number of things that you can change and edit for the asset. Of course, a tag, a description, but you can also assign a location, uh, assign a specific image. So uh, doing this, I can just browse for that image and load an image from my hard drive. I can also add a metadata to the asset and describe what type of asset it is, sensor location, sensor type, lubrication type, CMMS ID, all uh, useful as we move into the artificial intelligence uh, to create a very prescriptive task on what to do when you get an alert. So let's uh, move back to our home and let's uh, show you how to change alert limits. To change alert limits, you press the provision tab on the asset you'd like, and then you select the measurement of choice. Uh, in this case, we'll use the fault peak detection, and you select the alerts. And here you can enable or disable your alerts, and you can set the level that you'd like that alert to be. A couple points of interest on this page is uh, setting this ignore function. Uh, this ignore is a, an alarm clear on a pump or a fan that has a normal on off situation. So we can set a threshold, download that to the app, so that on a startup, uh, in our case on a 24-5 operation, a startup every Monday morning with a asset that has an alert condition. One, it'll hold the alert condition uh, through the weekend, even when the asset is turned off. And two, when the asset is turned back on in Monday morning, it will not re-alert. There is also a hysteresis or tolerance band to help avoid over-alerting or nuisance alert. And there is ability to uh, just set an alert frequency, send no more than every number of hours. And you might select, I don't want to hear about this asset more than once a day. So again, uh, you know, significant attention to detail in terms of avoiding over-alerting. Uh, next, moving back to the home page, we will look at how to change the measurement interval. Uh, in this case, you can configure the monitor. And so we're going to change the measurement interval, in our case, to every 15 minutes uh, 
faster update rate. And uh, we're going to leave the uh, report interval uh, separate. So the measurement interval is how often the asset scan wakes up to take data. The report interval is how often the phone call or the cellular connection is made to update the cloud. This update to 15 minutes uh, measurement interval will be uh, take place the next time the asset scan wakes up and makes a connection to the cloud to report its data. It will ask if there's any changes from the cloud and make those changes in its configuration so it knows to wake up. Next up in our quick start guide is to show you how to update your profile and change your email and text alerts. So to go to your username and update profile, and in here, you can see uh, what I have for a profile. You can enter a new name in for your email. You can enter a phone number in for your uh, text message. And you can set uh, alert escalation. In this case, I have all alerts coming to me. But if I was a, a maintenance manager, maybe I wanted to just get warning alerts and above, and I'd let my maintenance tech address all the minor issues. And if I was a plant manager, I may just select to have a critical and above alerts and let our maintenance manager and maintenance tech uh, take care of all the minor and warning situations. Additionally, there is an unreported alert, so the cloud is expecting to hear back from our asset scans, and it's watching for those. If it does not see a report from our asset scan, it will create an alert uh, letting the, uh, the portal know that, that the asset scan is not reported. I think it's relative to point out that Asset Scan Portal is uh, unlimited users, and so we can uh, provide not only view but alert out uh, with alert escalation as the base package. Moving on to the next piece is uh, exporting uh, data. So let's go back to our home page. From the home page, we go up to Views and Reporting. We can select what data we want to send out. In our case, we'll send out fault peak and overall vibration history. We will select our Davenport location, and we will select just the item that we were monitoring. And we can pull up however much history you would like to see. We'll put up a month of data. And it goes out and generates the report with that data. From here, you can save it as a PDF or a comma delimited or Excel. In our case, we'll go ahead and save it as an Excel and export. So here's our data in Excel. It's time stamped down at the asset scan. So this is when the measurement was taken for both the fault peak ultrasonic measurement as well as the overall vibration. And we can use this information in Excel to compare and contrast to other data that we may be collecting. So that concludes our review and quick study of Asset Scan. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at assetscan.com. Thanks for joining us today.